Hey, so greetings. I thought it might be uh, interesting to talk real quick about the different rules changes that I'm using and the variance. Um, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm like eight, nine games in, so it's too little, too late. <laughs> if, you, if you've watched all of them, it's like, what the hell is this guy doing? Um, but so, just a general overview. I don't have any graphics or anything because I'm I'm old and technology uh, uh, crippled. So, um, so the first rule, very simple, is we use all the optional balance rules for characters in ten six in the third edition rulebook. So, like the captain gets one die on hires. The druid is uh, immune to he, he can peace with nature on sight chits as well as the red and yellow uh, warning and sound chits. Uh, he's immune to curses. Um, stuff like that. With the exception that we don't for the elf. We don't make him pick great elf or light elf. Because we don't do a lot of PvP typically in the games that uh, we play at home and online here. Um, and I really think that the elf really is very much a PvP character. And that, that gold magic... Um, you know, is a little bit leans toward that, so we didn't think he needed him. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of uh, freaking spell options with some of these extra spells that um, that um, there's a lot of spell options. My T's down here, so we're gonna, I gotta pay attention. Sorry about that. A lot of spell options for the elf, and we have to look at all of them and make sure that we're not sort of overpowering the elf with his movement abilities and so on, but but we don't nerf him right now. And, you know, there's no game where we've seen where the elf just runs away with it and crushes everyone. So we're okay with how he, he behaves. Uh, the dwarf, we use sort of a variant of the productive dwarf rule in Realm Speak. Now, the productive dwarf rule is actually a little clunky because it requires him to take two move phases to go anywhere. Um, instead, what we do is the dwarf can get, it gets four phases like everybody else. Only two of those can ever be moves. Done. Um, this really hampers him in the mountains, which I don't love. Uh, he also gets an extra, uh, uh non-move phase in the caves. Uh, he can only, uh, um, an extra move phase, in, or an extra phase in the caves, I should say, and can only, uh, BDI, yeah, can only otherwise report two move phases a day. Like I said, I don't love what it does to him in the mountains. Um, cause he's a dwarf and, you know, it feels like dwarf should be awesome also in the mountains just from lore, but it really does hamper the dwarf in the mountains. He can, he can literally only move once ever. Um, so something to consider, but if you think about how the mountains affect all the characters, most of them are only moving one clearing at a time if they're hiding very similarly. So the dwarf gets sort of a situation where he has two hides, two moves to move one clearing. Hold on, there's my tea. Um, I always say this, one day it's going to happen, I'm going to be pissed. You know, this is how you get my live stream fail. <laughs> I mean, this is not live stream, so it really isn't. Um, I'll, but since I won't edit this video regardless, um, you, should still, you can still see me burn myself and go get, uh, get hospitalized here. Because I pour boiling hot water over myself. So that's the first thing. We use the ambush rules. Um, you know, I think that the ambush rules give uh, a missile character specifically uh, a huge advantage, but that advantage is counteracted by, since we're using basic combat rules, typically, um, you know, the ambush rules sort of counteract the fact that melee guy typically knows exactly what happens in a given fight, whereas a missileer always has a random table to roll against. I sometimes use serious wounds, I sometimes don't. It depends on if I want a lethal game or a non-lethal game, pretty much. It depends on if I want, you know, oh, you, you screwed up and now you're dead dead. Um, or if I want the characters, if I, if I want to end with four characters for sure, um, I'll use Serious Wounds. I do think that, um, you know, I do think the game is a tiny bit harsh on light characters for the fact that, indeed... Nothing can just hit them. Um, you know, they can't wear any armor, and they also can't get hit. So that's something to think about 
I do think Serious Wounds, uh, you know, has its place in some games. We're actually thinking of a PvP variant that does something like this, where you can't actually kill your your opponents, but instead, you know, do stuff to them, take their stuff, whatever. But anyway, Serious Wounds sometimes. Grudges and Gratitude, for sure. Um, you know, if you attack a native, bam, they're going to hate you, uh, and, and so on. Benevolent Spells, so we can cast... You know, things like, you know, a uh, poison on on the rogues for the magician, stuff like that. Uh, enhanced artifacts. I love enhanced artifacts, using them as magic chits and using them, being able to use them as color and so on. Um, I've thought about enhanced magic where, you know, spells and chits are never tied up. I don't, I don't love that, though. It sort of makes... You know, it really makes some of those, like something like an Absorb Essence. Um, you know, I, I I understand and I so want to do it because I do think that magic characters in some cases get a little bit of the shaft. Um, in some cases. I mean, obviously there's some powerful magic characters, but, you know, but on the other hand, I, 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 think, I think not tying up any chits makes all those permanent spells too crazy right i can just pop an absorb or you know and so on and so like i can i can absorb everything because there's no way that you're not going to get that absorb off or there's no way you're going to get that transform off right and those become um you know instant anything killers uh and i think uh, i think it cuts down on the utility of some other spells um so for instance the the one that i would uh, th you know, always thought about was there's a, a, a spell ripped out of I don't know which 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 expansion slash realm speak or whatever, which is drain life. It's a black spell. It hits. If it hits, it kills the monster, and then you you regain some some chits. Um, whereas you know why pick that instead of absorb? One's a combat spell. It has to hit. Absorb doesn't. Right. So. I, I do keep uh, the spells tied and the chips tied up, um, but I do like enhanced artifacts. And I've always thought about, like, is there a middle ground somewhere that we could figure out? Uh, a cheesy, really stupid homebrew brew is simply the fact that I add a single day to higher terms, so I don't count the first day effectively. You get 15 days for all intents and purposes. That's just a dumb tweak because I, I just hate the fact that that first day... You know, you can't hire someone and walk out, <laughs> right? You have to hire them, you have to wait, because you can't assign them to a guide. And so and I, I never loved that. I just added a day to the terms. It, It's cheesy. It's one of those stupid tweaks, um, you know. But I do do it, and I actually, strangely enough, like it a little bit. I like giving characters a two, two full weeks, and I, I think... Um, and, and that's because of this. So, so that's because of the other thing, this quest card variant. Um, so we made a homebrew. Uh, we meaning me, and then I subjected all my friends and family to play the drum. <laughs> so there you go. Um, and you've seen it if you watch any of the videos. Essentially, super simple. At the beginning of the game, you get three quest cards. Uh, we've made up a bunch of them. And these are stolen from all over the place, right? Some of them are slightly, you know, stripped down versions of the uh, questing the realm, um, you know, or, or the book of quests. Some are versions of questing the realm stuff in um, in realm speak. Uh, the the so the, super quick, and this will take the most of the time, unfortunately. I, I don't, you know, um, the. The motivation behind it was to change up the base victory conditions, which we felt were getting very stale. You know, right? Every character then had, well, you got a strategy for a character, or maybe two if you're a spellcaster. You always pick X, Y, and Z. You know, oh, two points in fame, three in notoriety for this guy, and he's going to nuke the rogues. Or, um, you know, or hunt goblins, or, or you know, stuff like that. Um, we just felt that it got very sane. And, you know, and ultimately the game just came down to, well, 
you know, you do the thing you do. You go to the you go to the, the big hexes, you find the treasure sites, you loot them, you take your ship back, you sell it. Oh, I made my gold. I'm done. Kind of. Um, so we want I wanted a little bit more of that uh, uh variety in victory conditions that say a questing the realm gets you. What I never liked about questing the realm was the plays. The um oh you discovered a thing, so you get a point. Well, you're gonna discover things. Like that's part of that that's just the game so what i wanted was a little bit of almost de-emphasizing the normal gameplay a tiny bit and then emphasizing this more targeted task-based gameplay so you get you know you get three tenths one task might be indeed go find the holder uh go go locate the holder Another might be execute trade phase with two groups that are friendly with you. You don't have to actually succeed and buy anything or whatever, but you just have to execute a, um, execute a phase with, with two of your friendly or allied groups. Um, one might be go to every clearing in the crags. Now, there's a little, don't get me wrong, these are not balanced. Um, doing everything in the crowds is a pain in the ass versus locate a board, for instance. Um, they're balanced a little bit on the fact that some of them are random and some of them aren't. Like if the horde never shows up, well, you're sort of bummed. Um, but going to every space in the crags is a disaster, <laughs> right? Unless you have something which which gets you around quickly, um, it, it's a little bit of a mess. So they're not balanced per se. What they what we do give though is you know um, so so you get three quest cards. I'll, I'll get get getting jumping around, getting ahead of myself. I'm Super professional here. <laughs> um, at least I'm not yawning. Typically, as soon as I if I start streaming, I yawn immediately. It's it's some kind of goofy brain disorder where I immediately start yawning. Um, there's also three event cards every week, and the event cards are are the all plays. So you can only score your cards. So your cards, whatever you get, you get three of them at the beginning of the game, and you can redraw at the beginning of the game if you don't like them. So, for instance, if you get armor, which is to um, take a damaged piece of armor and go to a certain location where the armorer will repair it for you, and then you you score. If you don't have any armor and can't carry armor, you're only going to get rid of that card. So you can get rid of cards in two ways. First off, at the beginning of the game, you can get rid of any number of cards and redraw. So if you just don't like that, if you got all duds, so be it. Um, also, if you end your day in any dwelling, you can, regardless of your status there, you can redraw one, all up to all your cards. So, so you do have an option to sort of get a list of cards which the board is favorable to and your character is and so on. Um, also, three event cards are drawn every week. Those are the all plays. You know, those will put markers on the board like, oh, you have to rescue the damsel in distress, or, hey, the inn requires you to take barrels of ale to each of the other garrisons, and so on. Um, so there's a bunch of those. They come out three a week. I think three a week is the correct number. Um, I was going to tweak that, but it seems like it works out. Some, some days you get players that are really on point, and they're just knocking them out. By the way, there's always one event. So if we knock out three events, we will draw one for the rest of that week. If we knock that one out, we'll draw another one. There's always at least one event on the table. Then at the beginning of the week, we draw three more and so on. Um, each task gives you one point and another reward. And the other reward is sort of where this goes wacky. And, and you know, if, if, if a hardcore and Magic Round player is going to, gonna, you know, give me a punch, they're going to, do it because of those rewards. Um, those rewards are anything from, you know, silly stuff like, oh, you get a potion or you get a couple bucks um, to, or some prowess. And I'll talk about prowess in a second. To you get a spell and you get some chits to cast that spell, you know, uh, or you get to copy one of your chits or you get a tough chit, which you can only use to wound and fatigue, stuff like that. And one of the reasons to do that, I feel, just to open the game up, is it balanced? Not, not exactly. We've done a couple balanced passes, and it, it's not horribly imbalanced, but it is not perfectly balanced either. Let's just understand that. Uh, is it randomy a little? And is it, 
you know, maybe has the option to over, yes, to power someone or, you know, make, make something bizarre happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, all, you give the magician an extra type five chit and all of a sudden he becomes a walking death machine, right? The, with the right spell. Oh, he gets drain life and he gets a type five chit. He's awesome. But, but we sort of love those situations and they don't happen that often. So, so it's a little imbalanced. Um, it is sort of fun though, and it makes each game sort of almost a race game now against the other players. Can I score more than everybody else? Speaking of that, um, there's then four categories: prowess, gold, great treasures, and spells learned. We merge fame and notoriety into prowess, um, which is the better of either of them, effectively. And you get that for killing monsters. You can get it for selling certain treasures. Uh, and, and so on. And effectively, you gain then points based on how you do in those categories compared to your other competitors. So for instance, if you win prowess, I get the most prowess in a four-player game, I'm going to get two points. Uh, if I'm runner-up, I get a single point, and then if I am third or fourth, I get nothing. Uh, I'm not sure if those values are correct. What it means is there's eight points in play, and then however many points you get in cards. Very typically, we see people score, you know, four to five, six, seven points in cards, maybe. I've seen nine points. I've never seen double digits in cards yet. You know, so so there's an equal number of points sort of out there, but you're competing for those points very directly. And then there's a certain number of points on the board, um, you know, for cards, right? There's eight points in categories and there's... Uh, now, keep in mind that it's rough, and, and different characters are, are have a hard time with some. For instance, if you're the Black Knight, it's going to be very difficult for you to get spells. You can, because some of the quests give them to you, but that's super luck-based. Um, you know, but you should get some treasures. You should get gold. You might get great treasures, and so on. Um, it's just one of those things. I, one of these days, I would love to go through and just say, okay, what do I think this character should be good at getting and are they do they have a chance really an equal chance as everyone else right you know for instance you know who has the best chance to win the game given given that is it the sorcerer i never do well with the sorcerer in this uh, strangely enough so that does a couple things uh it, it has a different effect on the game one thing is it makes movement much more important um you know figuring out where your objectives are and if you can get there and and how quickly you can get there and how much it's going to cost you to get there in terms of time is super important you know so if i have a oh, do the crags well the crags are here and i'm way down here at the at the guard house well god dang it i got a long way to go i had to go through the borderland to get to the you know or, heck i don't even know yeah let's get to the borderland and then boom crags and then one two three all these mountains chained together that's going to take me two weeks. Well, it's not worth it. Throw that card away, right? Uh, so it makes movement super important. It gives the Amazon a bonus. It gives the Elf a bonus a little bit because the Elf, you know, with that extra hide phase, effectively, you know, an, anyone with an extra phase, uh, that's saving you time, and that is super important in the questing game. It makes the Druid fairly powerful because, again, he is... You know, walking around with impunity in, in many cases is like an extra phase um, since you don't have to hide every day. Stuff like that. So it, it does sort of make, uh, give movement a, a bigger, a, a huge part in the game. But the other thing it does is it, it moves your victory conditions around and changes them on a more dynamic basis. You know, as opposed to me picking, well, I'm going to take a point in fame and a point in notoriety and a point in go or whatever. A, 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 my ex, uh, distribute my five points, and now I know I'm killing shit. I'm the berserker. I'm going to take some fame, three fame, two notoriety. I'm just going to kill stuff all day. Uh, I don't even care about gold. I don't care about treasures. Who knows? I'm just going to kill, 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 kill. kill. Well, that, that and that's great. Um. And then you, that's how you get and, and I like that, but I do find it boring after, you know, a dozen years of this game or whatever. 
So this sort of uh, spreads it out. And now you could kill monsters all day, but you're only going to get two points. No matter what, it's two points. The max you can get, if you kill the most things of everybody else and you just kick the crap out, you get two points. And so the rest of the points you're going to get, you're going to have to find something else. Um, so I, I think it makes it harder for some of those big fighters to to win directly because they're competing on a different playing field all of a sudden. And you can't pick your own victory conditions exactly. Um, is that good or bad for the game? I don't know. I prefer it. I, I, I don't love going back to the original victory conditions anymore. I do enjoy uh, the new, you know, the, the questy victory conditions. What I would like to do is I would like to sit down, redo all the quests, um, make sure they're balanced, try to get a little bit more narrative in them. That's the one thing that I failed at is they're very tasky. It's very MMO quest. It's very kill 10 rodents and, you know, bring me their tails kind of thing, right? Um, if you go here and do this thing, you will score. Don't get me wrong. Magic Realm is a board game. You know, it's, 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 it's narrative is sort of in, in what happens in between that. Uh, but it would be really cool, maybe. Um, maybe it wouldn't, actually. But but something to think about would be, would it be cool if um, we could make these quest cards mean something, right? You pull one, and then you pull this other one, and together, oh, this thing happens. And now all of a sudden you have a goblin invasion. Um, and then the victory conditions change for everybody. That's maybe a different game. <laughs> a different uh, a different. But something between Book of Quests and Questing the Realm, I think, is is what what I would ultimately shoot for. Right now, we're very much closer to Questing the Realm, tweaking out some of the stuff I didn't like, which was mostly the all plays, just rewarded you for just playing the same game you were going to play anyway. Whereas what I wanted to do was reward you for not playing that game and trying to, you know, to get you to play this sort of other task-based, location-based sort of game. Um, I find it enjoyable. I don't know if other people would. Um, so the last thing is we do use a bunch of rando spells that I picked up off of various. They're not balanced necessarily. Every so often I do a little pass and think, eh, should that be in there? Uh, most of the ones I've gotten rid of fun, uh, humorously enough are the ones that I wrote. Because <laughs> I'm like, eh, I don't like that. Um. You know, and some of them play into this questing game. Ask Demon, for instance, lets you cheat the, the deck, the uh, the quest card deck, um, instead of just asking a yes or no question, because, eh, that's, that's not super exciting, but now it's something you might actually might do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, the, those are the, the, the changes that, that I have made. And, and that way, you know, just the idea would be that you would you know, you'd be able to see and understand sort of the game a little bit better. At some point, I would like to, I got to figure out how to get this, maybe get the rule change out there and post it somewhere so that people can, can putz around and savage me on the internet for being a dumbass, because uh, this is no good. <laughs> but I still like it, so. That's it. Thank you. Uh, if you're watching any of the videos, enjoy the videos. Uh, and that's it. Thanks.